Time's father swore he wasn't the dad on paternity court. I, I can't, I, I, uh uh. I am not the father. <laughs> oh boy. I need to know from you whether you ever were in all of their lives as a father. Were no. you ever just there? No. Were you talking to me? I was talking to you. Then shut up. No, no, no. I moved hundreds of miles away because when my baby was born, she came out five shades too dark compared to me. I mean, no, two months no, early. No, we're both you very white. Months. The summer fling can be a baby making recipe, but the alleged baby daddy here is sure that he's got nothing to do with the defendant's baby. Mr. Boykin, you claim that your relationship with the defendant was nothing more than a spring fling. You say after disappearing for nine months, Miss Gully resurfaced claiming you fathered her son, Messiah Gully. You are certain that this is not your child and plan to prove that in court today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Wow, coming off that strong right from the beginning? Why do you believe so, sir? Your Honor, I'm here to prove I am not Messiah's father. We only had sex a couple times. It was like a summer breeze going through the wind. I actually did not know that she was pregnant. And so you truly believe you are not this child's father? I'm not the father, Your Honor. Miss Gully, are you certain Mr. Boykin is your child's biological father? Yes. Okay, the guy is set on a repeat. What does baby mama have to say about this? He's the only man that I've been with during the time that I got pregnant. There's no other guy. And why do you think he's denying? I, I mean, like, I have no idea. He knew that I was pregnant because I called him from the hospital when I found out that I was pregnant. So you notified him, you told him? Yes. So you're saying that that's a lie for him to come in here and say that he didn't even know you were pregnant? Correct. Let's go to the contradiction part. It wasn't a committed relationship, Mr. Boykin? No, Your Honor. How'd you meet? I met her at the store. Talked to her a couple times. We ended up having sex a couple times. It was just a sex We thing, exchanged you know. numbers. How often were you having sex, Mr. Boykin? A few times, Your Honor. I stopped messing with her like in August. Were you using protection? At first we was, but then I started. We never not. used protection. Both parties have different recollection of the storyline. Mr. Boykin, that would put the window of conception right around the time you were having sex with Miss Gully. How is that, Your Honor? If you had sex over the course of a few oh, months and somewhere about 10 months later, she says she's pregnant, that seems to be the window of time that the baby would be conceived. I, I can't, I, I, uh-uh. I am not the father. <laughs> It turns out that Miss Gully herself had pushed the plaintiff away. You know how she got back in touch with me through a Facebook friend of mine. After 10 months, I was never there through the we pregnancy. We lost contact, so right. yes. I she stopped know. calling me. I was never there through the pregnancy or none of that. So, wait. I called him after I had my baby, after I cut him off, months before I had my baby, because all he did was call me, wanted to have sex. This being left out of pregnancy drove Mr. Boykin into a paternity dilemma. I'm trying to be on the right page because I know for a fact that's not my child. I didn't talk to her period until she had the baby at the hospital. I didn't. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't go up there the first day, but the second day I went up there, Your Honor, I hit the lab. I'm thinking like, Darius, is this your baby? Then some tell me, Darius, this ain't your baby. If you had I look doubt, what's going on, why Your would Honor, you show up? Why would you get in touch with me through Facebook to let me know that I'm your child's father? So after a thorough conversation with himself, Mr. Boykin came to this conclusion. You went back and forth. Did you finally go up there? Your Honor, yeah. After I got my, myself together, I went up there. I hold the baby, I was looking at it, then I looked at her, looking at the baby, looked at her, and I said, no, this ain't my baby. That's how happy. I felt. He stared at him for a minute, then he kissed him, and he told me he'll be keeping in touch, and he left. I'll be keeping in touch? Right. Did you keep in touch? She didn't keep in touch, I didn't keep in touch. Next, the DNA dotty came up. This Gully had just had the baby. How's oh, she going no. half on a DNA test and all of no that, job. and she's still trying to heal and deal with the baby? Why wouldn't you just say, I want this result, I'm gonna pay for this test, as long as you agree to just test the baby. I was trying to do that, Your Honor. Now I'm concerned about the fact that you are certain you are not this child's father. I'm certain. She told me it's a possibility. Hold up. Here comes another twist. Miss Gully, you testify that this was the only man you were with. Who's this other man? He's not the father. There is the father. I don't believe the other guy's the father. So who is this other guy? A long-term friend. And you were having sex with him unprotected as well? Yes. How often were you with that man? Maybe a few times before I got pregnant. So this is why the guy is so persistent, right? It's a possibility that it might be his and a possibility that it might be yours. That's exactly what she told me. And when That's did she tell you like... this? At what point in this process, in this timeline, did she tell you that? After she had the baby, Your Honor. After the baby was born? No, man. We ain't get back, in, we ain't start talking until you had the baby. I did not talk to you until you had the baby. Right. Okay, well, so tell the truth. 
Only DNA can decide whose testimony is right. In the case of Boykin versus Gully, when it comes to two-month-old Messiah Gully, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Boykin, you are not the father. Mr. Davis has been discriminating against the plaintiff, and he feels no shame in doing so. The reason why I treated Cheryl the way I treated her, because her mother slept around. You was a liar. Your mother did sleep around. Okay, first of all, neither you one of you all was in there when it started, okay? She had three kids before I met her. Okay, she had you three, you supposedly she had you three with first. me, and she now was, she don't has, don't how many more after me? I did a grand total of 13? Come on, you ain't did nothing anyways, you Ladies and gentlemen. No, we're not exaggerating a bit. The young left out child testified this to the court. He always treated me differently. He will bring things around like a Chris, one Christmas, he bring a whole bunch of toys around, get them toys on top of toys, and then tell them, oh, play with your sister. He never showed no love towards me. I'm always the one that was begging for his love when he was just giving all his love to both of them. And I felt like that was wrong. This was just the start of the bustle coming next. I need to know from you whether uh. you ever were in all of their lives as a father. Were no. you ever just there? No. Were you talking to me? I was talking to you. Then shut up. Now you oh, shut no, up. no, 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 no. You shut up. Mr. Now Davis, first of all, I control the score. You give each other a chance to talk. We cannot get down to the facts. You want answers, you gotta let them talk. Well, these revelations were enough to make Judge Lake go salty. Go to the store and get toys for two of three children and walk into a house and disappoint a child for no reason. You should have brought her a toy if she wasn't your child, if she was your enemy's child. She, you should have brought her something because she's a child. <laughs> But the alleged after had one statement on Richo. Working at a restaurant, that's when I first started. Of course, being the man that I am, okay, and I, I'm not gonna say I was an angel, because I wasn't. Okay. You know, I slept around too. You know, it wasn't like I was a deadbeat, as they may want to presume that I was, but I was not a deadbeat. Yeah, yeah, so not when you were I in believe the I was talking to the judge with their mother, you would have a child, but then you'd question whether or not that child was yours. Exactly. So everyone's paternity is questioned here. Ain't that convenient? Why we was, okay, why we was having a relationship? I don't believe I was, I, I believe the judge was talking to me. Why man broke your promises then? Okay, why sit right that's, there that, like that's on me. That's like graduation. That's on me. I that own that. That's on me. I said, let her give you, can I answer your question? 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 If you show up to my graduation, what did you do? First of all, first of all, that is a lie. Looks like no innocent is riding this on again, off again relationship seesaw. Why do you act? Doubt out. Why is I it that Jonathan, your doubt is projected onto her? I treated her Jonathan singly? and Janita. I actually embraced them. Matter of fact, Janita was. I treated her like gold. It's like my oldest child. If I'm your golden child, you would have been there for your golden child. Really? Even if you not giving up money, call, come see. Every time I talk to him, he ain't got no money he to never do nothing. Talk to me. After this, the judge called up a witness from the plaintiff's side. Hello, Mister. How you doing? What do you have to say about this? As far as me hearing about this DNA test, it surprised me because if you asked for a DNA test and you claim you I'm yours. You know what I'm saying? And then. I hear that it's about disease in the family. Why would you wait after 27 years just to come to me with this? It's something you should have told me on the phone. Do something. Let me know Can what's happening. Next, the real reason behind it. Ooh, I'm not their daddy part got out. This proof shows the date, the last date, which is in pink, as you mm -hmm. can see here. It shows that air just right there says 48,000. Once they update everything. 48,000 dollars. That's what there. But like I said, it's, it's probably, the last pound I got was 60,000. true. I stick up to my responsibility because that's the reason. I, I was there. I will see this. I see small Yo. payments here. Drained from the defendant's attitude, the judge asked Miss Rubin to articulate her pain. Mr. Davis, why do you have those tears? Daddy, how you gonna treat them two just so holy? And she didn't even care. She didn't even want to be around you. I'm the one chasing after your love. Then you get up here, you want to act like, oh, all this never happened. All this out the door. I don't want to talk to him. Lose my number. Don't try to contact me. None of that. I don't want none of it. I guess it's time to open those envelopes. In the case of Jonathan Rubin, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Johnny Davis, you are his father. As it relates to Miss Janita Rubin, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Davis, you are the father. In the case of Cheryl Rubin, this court has determined you 
off her phone. Paternity doubt has driven Mr. Smith to a state apart from his family. Ms. Melody, you and the defendant are separated and living in different states because he says he's not the father of your nine-month-old baby, Savannah. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Smith, you say the plaintiff's continuous lies and infidelities are proof that you are not the father of her daughter and you refuse to move back in. Yes, Your Honor. Moving away had taken a toll on poor mommy at the podium. My girls asked for him all the time. Sorry. It's okay. Take your time. He moved hundreds of miles away? Yeah. We live in different states. Like, we don't even talk on the phone. We talk through it when we talk it on Facebook. And Mr. Smith defended his abandoning actions like this. I don't know. I moved hundreds of miles away because when my baby was born, she came out five shades too dark compared to me. I mean, no. Two months no, early. No, we're both she very was white. Two months early. I wasn't fully dilated when she came out. She was bruised. She's not a different color. That's the excuse you like to tell everybody. But. No. He hasn't even seen our kids in a uh, month. He's been gone for months. No, you, you he doesn't can see. call, he doesn't help. I'm doing it all by myself. So the real question was what brought this marriage to the edge of divorce? I was going through her phone. Normal, I believe normal married couples do. They check um, check up on each other's stuff. I mean, I do. But only because there was a history of infidelity in the relationship. In the marriage too? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so you were doing a little investigation. Yes, Your Honor. So, going through her phone. So I'm going through her phone, looking, and I see that she's talking to some guy. History got somewhat repeated like this. Well, I do, I pick up my cell phone, I call him, and I say, you know, hey, who is this? That's when he tells me, oh, I had an ad on Craigslist looking for a girlfriend. I buy, my wife, I buy cars Ashley, off of is the one. And I buy cars, we sell them, we fix them up, we sell them, we make money on it. If he had an ad on Craigslist for a girlfriend, that's his business, but that's not why I contacted him. I never saw the ad, that's what he told me. He was searching for a girlfriend. Okay, things are turning inside out now. You called him, maybe about the car at first, yeah. but then you kept talking. And how did that conversation go? Um, we we were supposed to go out for drinks. We were supposed to meet up. We never actually did. Be so you call the guy, us. you end up on the phone, which is why when Mr. Smith called him back, he didn't want to talk to him. Okay. So you making him think he crazy when you're making a date to have drinks. So his spidey sense is right. <laughs> Mr. Smith's spidey senses further got tickled by this. African-American men, Hispanic men, and that, that's really why when my baby was born, I thought that she's not mine. I mean, you can see here in the pictures, Your Honor, that I... You feel like the coloring in her forehead indicates that she's African-American, or do you feel like her skin tone, you feel like, is a darker just, skin just tone? Just her overall skin tone. Her skin tone. Dark. Wait, there's more coming. I called this guy off my phone, and he didn't want to talk to me at all. So I sent him $100 cash for him to tell me, just tell me what's going on with you and my girlfriend. And he sent me the pictures. What'd he tell you? He didn't say anything. All I did was send me the pictures back that she had sent him. Recent pictures? Yes, Your Honor. She actually sent me the same ones. Oh, boy. And the woman was laughing. So, Miss Melody, you smiling, so he's not lying. Yeah, he's gonna give his part. He's not gonna bring up what he had done. And I really don't wanna, like, bring that up right now. But, yeah, he knows what he did. He knows exactly what he did. He cheated on me with many people. Okay. And he's just in here trying to act like he's the, such a good person. No, he's not. Okay, we've, uh, all, we've all made our mistakes, but before... Well, let me... <laughs> She even claimed to know why her husband was up with such heavy accusations. I don't know, he comes up with stuff. I applied for jobs on Craigslist. I went and applied for a job for cleaning, just cleaning, and I could bring my kids. First he thought I was trying to get with the guy, and then he thought it was for a sexy maid. I would never put an outfit on for someone I don't even know, let alone get paid for it and have my kids there. And so, no, I'm very, I've been faithful to him. I've never cheated on him. Because of all the infidelity between them, reconciliation was not possible between this couple. I want a divorce. I mean, I have the papers here. I'll go ahead and sign my half of the papers. If they're not mine, that's it. Good, I'll sign it too. Jerome, hand me that paperwork he just signed. You just handed me divorce papers. Yes, Your Honor. You're saying if these children are not yours, you want a divorce. Yes, Your Honor. And you've signed your half of the paperwork. Yes, Your Honor. Let's see if the results will salvage this marriage or not. In the case of Melody versus Smith, when it comes to two-year-old Natalie Smith, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Smith, you are her father. <laughs> In the case of Melody versus Smith, as it pertains to nine-month-old Savannah Melody, Mr. Smith, you are Savannah's father. <laughs>
children people. Mr. Johnson does not doubt that little Jace is not his son. Ms. Wilson, you claim the defendant got you pregnant and now refuses to do anything for your four-year-old son, Jace. You say today's DNA test will prove he is Jace's father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson, you state you are 100% certain you are not her child's biological father and have evidence to support your claim. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And this is why he was doing nothing for the plaintiff's son. Why you chose to do nothing? Okay, first of all, when I got with Quadonna, she was dealing with her ex still. He was still in the picture. My son clearly looks like her ex. So wow. at this point, I'm confused. I'm delirious. I don't even stay in this state no more. I was in Missouri. This is why I contracted my story from my calculations. I was not even there when he was conceived. He even had a calendar to line up with his claims. So Mr. Johnson, explain this. You say on April 17th you moved away? Yes, Your Honor. Jace was born February 2nd. Exactly. She would have had to have been pregnant for 10 plus months for this. Correct, Your Honor. For you to be the father. Correct. Miss Wilson, do you remember Mr. Johnson moving away? No. The couple had a wedding planned. We was talking about getting married. I was like, well, I don't want to get married until we have the baby because I want to lose weight and fit in my dress. I know for a fact that he was here. Were you talking about getting married and planning this baby, Mr. Johnson? No, ma'am. We sure weren't. That's a lie. No, y'all. So you're a man of few words, but I'm gonna need you to talk. Okay, this is confusing, don't you think? You didn't even want to see the baby? No, y'all. I stopped communication with her because she told me she didn't want me to have nothing to do with her or her child. That's life. a lie. That is a lie. We got into it that over the phone. That is a lie. No. And she told me on no. the phone, no. well, since okay. this is not working, then you don't have to be in our life at all like that, you know, getting all loud with me. So I hung up on her. That's what I do. I'm not finna argue with you. The situation is what it is, and that's why we're here today, because I'm here to clear my name. So the man straight up his potential son. You disappear for two years, even if I counted on that timeline and you say, well, I was gone around that 10th month or so. As a person, as a man, wouldn't it be swirling in your mind like, well, what if the date for the doctor was off? What if something's off? What if it was my child? Two years? You just ghost? I had my life, she had hers. I moved. Later, he tried to confirm, but not in a very good way. I took the child to my cousin's house so, you know, so they could see him and she was like, well, he does look like you cuz, you know, she's older. So, and as I proceeded to take him back to the laundromat, I pulled up. I'm not even there 10 minutes. Here comes the ex. He pulls up, the little boy running to him, daddy, daddy. So I bail out. And so now you think he's the biological father. Yes, I do, Yon. There's something seriously wrong going on here. You're supposed to feel some kind of bond with your child. I have four of the kids that I take care of, Yon. And I got a bond with all of them. All my kids look like me, exactly like me. We have strong genes in our family, and I know for a fact that's not my son. What's really going on here? It's something else going on. Your family says it's, they think it's yours. And whether you do or you don't, believe it in your heart, the way that you have failed to show up consistently. This denial was drawing Miss Wilson. Look at him and tell him how let down you you are. I'm hurt that I'm even standing here and have to go through this with you. I was in love with you. I loved you. I still love you because you're my child's father at the end of the day. Possibly. But I can't believe I'm standing here doing this with you right now. After all that we've been through, after everything we've been through, when I had Joe back through all what you've been through, but me standing here, that's your son. We'll find out. This is hard to watch. Let's move to the truth, shall we? In the case of Wilson versus Johnson, when it comes to four-year-old Jace Wilson, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. As I stand here today, I can apologize to you as a man. I apologize. Miss Beto is outraged by the fact that her man is asking for a DNA test. Miss Beto, you say you were furious when the defendant asked you for a DNA test on your seven-month-old daughter, Ileana. Now you claim that request has broken up your happy home. Mr. Bolton, you say you are desperate to discover the truth because you've already grown to love her as your own. That's right. Mr. Bolton is back in paternity court because he doesn't want to be deceived again. So what has happened since you were last here? When the baby was born, I cut the umbilical cord, the doctors wiped the baby off, and they gave Miss Beto the baby. The doctor that gave the procedure to deliver the baby, he handed me the baby and he looked at me. He said, are you sure this baby's yours? And I looked what? at the doctor, I looked at the doctor, I'm like, what do you mean? He said, because this baby's white. Oh, that can snap any person out. Before congratulations, 
Are you sure this is your child? That's doubt. That's they doubt. She mine, I know. She his, I know. But that's what I'm saying. For the father, that can be overwhelming. But the baby is too white thing continued. We have friends and family come over to see the baby, then looking at the baby like, oh, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Is she yours? <laughs> That's not what they said, Your Honor. What they were saying, maybe on his side, but my side, they did make some comments. But of course, I defend it. That's my daughter. I see him all the time in her. I see a little bit of my features, but mostly I see him. And the comments just kept coming. He looked at the baby. He's like, Rico, is this baby yours? I look at him like, what you mean? He says, this is baby's whack. <laughs> So yeah. I'm like, wow. So now the doctor, your family members, people and your boss yeah, people are all just openly asking you. Yeah, this is baby mine. Mr. Bolton had been riding on a false paternity ride long before his appearance in paternity court. She got pregnant. Me and the guy, we talked, and we trying to find out what's going on. She got abortion immediately because she didn't know who the father was. And the third time was when I came on the court to find out the DNA test from Micah and find out he wasn't mine. So it's like I have strong reason to get the DNA test to figure out what's going on. Three times. Yes, ma'am. Someone has claimed you're the father of their child. Yes, ma'am. But you weren't. I wasn't. Till now, the defendant has not presented anything worth doubt. Ms. Beto, you tell me you're a faithful, loyal woman, and I have no reason at this point not to believe you. He hasn't presented any testimony that would say otherwise. Last year and a half or so, have you slept with anybody else? Um, we actually broke up last year around August, and it was due to infidelity on his behalf. And he had been swindling around himself. So, like, I felt like I was pressured getting pushed to the point where I should see just to make you happy. Because this is what you're doing. You that put pressure on me. That was your logic? Yes. That was, that, I mean, that was my logic because every day she's saying, hey, you're a cheater, you're a cheater. So, look, I cheated. I did, and I meant to that. She left. So, this is where the other guy came into the picture. I left him, and it wasn't like, oh, hey, I'm single, let's go party. You know, it was more like I was hurt. It had been a month later. I just went out, hanging out. One thing led to another. I saw a guy I liked but we actually slept yeah. together twice. Yeah, the first time was unprotected, the second time was protected, and after that, as a matter of fact, um, I spoke to him after that, but we never yeah. had any type of relationship or anything. She wasn't answering my phone calls for a while. Mm. Looks like that dreadful past has led to Mr. Bolton not trusting anyone. That's the things you pulling behind you when you that. come into a relationship. I'm not saying that is right, but I'm telling you that is real. When she left, her and this other guy was messing around. When she came back around, we was living together, okay? I feel like, you know, maybe she's still been messing with this guy. Because all of a sudden, like she said, we've been together five years. The first time she ever got pregnant. She's coming back around, boom, baby. Like, what's going on? So, only truth silences all of the doubts. In the case of Beto v. Bolton. When it comes to the paternity of Ileana Bolton and as to whether Mr. Bolton is her biological father, Mr. Bolton, you are her father. Oh, uh, Gail Neeson. We men. Yes. Oh, yeah, and it's pretty.